السلام عليكم uh, This is the third lecture in the reproductive uh, module It will be about the metabolic change that occur in pregnancy and how does the maternal system adapt to pregnancy The objective of this lecture is to discuss the function of the placenta including the transport function and also we will describe the biochemical change that occur in the maternal system including the renal system, the endocrine and the biochemical change in general. Also we will list the component of the amniotic fluid and how it will change from the beginning of the pregnancy uh, toward the end and we will discuss the clinical significance and the use of certain analytes as a biomarker to assess the maternal and fetal health. The placenta is a disc-shaped organ which provides the sole physical link between the mother and the fetus. During the pregnancy, the placenta grows to provide an even larger surface area to uh, allow the maternal fetal exchange of substance. The placenta acts to provide oxygen and nutrient to the fetus. Also it can eliminate the waste product and remove the CO2 and other material that are uh, end product of uh, fetal metabolism. It metabolizes a number of substances and can release metabolic product into either the maternal or the fetal circulation. It produces hormone and uh, these hormones are very vital to the normal pregnancy. To transfer any substance from the mother to the fetus, uh, there is a lot of factors that may affect the process. The first and the most important is the concentration gradient between the maternal and fetal circulatory system. For any substance, if it is found in higher concentration in the maternal circulation, then it can pass by passive uh, transport, while if it is found in lower concentration in the maternal circulation, it needs to be transported by active transport. The second factor, if there is a binding protein that can facilitate the transport, the nature of the substance to be transferred, the lipid solubility of the substance, also this is a very important factor. And in addition, the presence of certain transport uh, mechanism that can facilitate the transport from the maternal to the fetal circulation, for example, the facilitated transport uh, like the ion pumps or the endocytosis that is receptor mediated. All these are important before a substance can be transferred from the maternal to the fetal circulation. Certain material transported between the maternal circulation and the fetal circulation uh, according to a certain uh, way for example, certain materials are not transported at all. For example, the, most of the protein in the maternal circulation doesn't transfer to the fetus because of their large size. The thyroid hormone also are not transported. The maternal IgM, which is a large immunoglobulin, the IgA, and in addition, the RBC of both the fetus and the mother are not transported between the two circulations. Otherwise, uh, it will be uh, lead to a serious disease. Uh, certain material can be transported passively, uh, which means uh, without the need for energy, and this occurs from the area of higher concentration to lower concentration. For example, the unconjugated the free steroids, the steroid sulfates, and the free fatty acid. They can be transported, but uh, usually in a limited range. The other way of transport of substance is by the passive transport uh, which is free and uh, not limited and there is no need for energy in this form of transport and it will be trans 
the substance are transported from higher concentration to lower concentration for example the oxygen the co2 the sodium the chloride urea and ethanol co2 co2 are transported from the fetal to the maternal circulation to get rid of it oxygen from the maternal to the fetal circulation the other way of transport of the material is through the active uh, transport uh, it needs energy and usually uh, either the concentration is the same or it is lower uh, so it needs need energy uh, for example it is uh, very important for uh, glucose transport and uh, for calcium transport also and uh, some of the amino acid are transported by the active transport mechanism the receptor mediated endocytosis and by this way of transport we mean that the uh, material are transported uh, by the inward budding of the plasma membrane and you know, this is invagination and it can pick the substance and transport it for example the maternal IgG uh, insulin also can be transported by receptor mediated endocytosis and the LDL lipoprotein low density lipoprotein uh, cholesterol also transported by receptor mediated endocytosis and this material is very important for synthesis of certain hormone in the fetus the placenta can secrete also several hormones and they are very important to maintain the pregnancy some of these hormones according to their uh, nature uh, some are proteins and some are steroid hormone the major protein hormone are the chorionic gonadotropin or what is called the human chorionic gonadotropin and the other protein hormone that are secreted from the placenta is the placenta lactogen while uh, the steroid hormone that are very important to maintain a normal pregnancy is the progesterone the estradiol or estrogen in general we have many uh, class, class of estrogen that are synthesized by the placenta we have the estradiol the e2 the estriol the e3 and the estrone which is the e1 so we have the protein hormone in the whole human chorionic gonadotropin and human placenta lactogen and we have the uh, steroid hormone which are the progesterone and the estrogens we have three types of estrogen the e2 e3 and e1 the e2 is the estradiol the e3 is the estriol and estrone which is the e1 when the placenta size increase during pregnancy then the production of this hormone also will increase so it is proportional except for the uh, human chorionic gonadotropin uh, this hormone will, will peak at the end of the first trimester uh, at the end of the first trimester of pregnancy and uh, they couldn't peak my human colony gonadotropin or a high the equal level of the, of this hormone human chorionic gonadotropin is one of the important hormone for maintenance of normal pregnancy a site of uh, synthesis is in the placenta and in, what is the action of human chorionic gonadotropin it stimulates the uh, corpus luteum to uh, synthesize progesterone uh, and by doing this then there will be a prevention of the menstruation and allow the endometrium to grow and uh, protect the pregnancy so it provide a good media for the implanted uh, zygote uh, sometimes it is called a human chorionic gonadotropin and sometimes abbreviated as chorionic gonadotropin. What are the receptors that are specific for binding to a human chorionic gonadotropin? It has no specific receptor. It binds to the L receptor for the luteinizing hormone that is found on the corpus luteum. Now, in the receptor uh, for luteinizing hormone, it is the same for the human chorionic gonadotropin on the corpus luteum when it binds to it it allow the synthesis of progesterone and maintain the pregnancy one of the uses of the human chorionic gonadotropin is to date and diagnose the pregnancy we have two types of tests either qualitative or the quantitative the 
uh, sample that is used uh, for dating and diagnosis of pregnancy is uh, either the urine, which is a common test, and the serum test, either urine or the serum. This is for a qualitative test. Uh, urine test became positive if we test for the HCG and the urine it became uh, positive one week after the last missed period so the last missed period for example is uh, is in the 1st of April then in the uh, 7th of May the urine test will test positive if the pregnancy had occurred if we want a rapid uh, and uh, test then in this case we can measure the hcg uh, in the screen for it in the serum it will uh, test earlier than the urine test so we have two qualitative tests for dating pregnancy immobile urine or the serum serum test earlier than the urine where well, urine here one week after the last missed period The quantitative minister. So the hormone human chorionogonadotropin can be used as a marker for first of all diagnosis uh, pregnancy and as we said we can use it either either in the urine or in the sample the serum sample. In addition, it can be used to identify ectopic pregnancy. What is the ectopic pregnancy? Is the pregnancy that occur outside of the uterus. It is a dangerous condition, and uh, in this case, uh, the HCG can be used as a marker in addition to radiology and ultrasound and other marker. In ectopic pregnancy, the beta HCG level usually increase less than the normal. If we compare the reference value for each week of uh, pregnancy, in the normal pregnancy and ectopic pregnancy, we found that the ectopic pregnancy, the level will be less. Also, it can be used as a marker of uh, malignancy. Certain malignancy, uh, for example, uh, the uh, can secrete HCG. It is an HCG secreting a tumor and some gestational trophoblastic disease or non-trophoblastic neoplasm can secrete HCG and mimic and give a positive pregnancy test. But in reality, it is not a pregnancy. Uh, it is an HCG secreting a tumor. So it can be used for the diagnosis of this tumor and for follow-up uh, of the uh, after treatment. Also, the HCG can be used as a predictor for the risk that this baby have a Down syndrome and trisomy 18. During pregnancy, we can do screening. A certain elevation or the decrease in the level of SCG it can give a clue for a chromosomal abnormality. The other protein hormone that is produced by the placenta is the human placenta lactogen. It is also called human chorionic somatotropin. It is a polypeptide protein and have similarity with two other hormones. It is similar to growth hormone and similar to prolactin. It have similarity, some percentage of similarity with both the growth hormone and the prolactin. It is a very important hormone because of its diverse effect. The most important uh, function of the human placenta lactogen is uh, metabolic it decreases the maternal insulin sensitivity so that the blood glucose in the maternal circulation will increase the blood glucose in the maternal circulation will in increase and at the same time the use of glucose by the mother will decrease and this will help to uh, ensure adequate fetal nutrition and even the chronic hypoglycemia may stimulate the uh, production of more placenta like uh, lactogen. The other metabolic effect of a human placenta lactogen is uh, increase the lipolysis, the breakdown of uh, free fatty acids. These free fatty acids, especially during fasting, became available for the maternal circulation as a source of energy 
so that more glucose will be delivered to the fetus. In addition, the result of the metabolism of free fatty acid, the ketone formed, can cross the placenta and also can be used by the fetus. This was the metabolic effect of the human placenta lactogene. In addition, the other function of the uh, human placenta lactogene, it has a prolactin-like activity. So it allows the mammogenesis and the production of the milk. So the other function is the lactogenic. In addition, because of its similarity between uh, in part of the structure of human placenta lactogene with growth hormone, so it has a, a growth enhancing effect. It has a somatotropic effect and have a luteotropic effect. In addition, it enhances the formation of the arthropoiesis, formation of the RBCs, and this is called arthropoietic effect of human placenta lacto lactogene. And uh, it has aldosterone stimulating effect. We know that the aldosterone enhances the uh, sodium uh, reabsorption. Uh, and may be responsible as a side effect of the increase in the human placenta lactogene of uh, retention of some of the sodium with an um, equimolar amount of water. So it has a lactogenic effect, production of uh, similar to the human, plas uh, the human uh, prolactin. It has a metabolic effect and by delivering more glucose to the baby and use of by lipolysis, uh, use, uh, delivering more free fatty acid to the mother that can be used instead of glucose while delivering more glucose to the fetus and also it can deliver ketone to the baby and use them as a source of energy. It has a growth promoting effect, luteotropic, erythropoietic formation of the RBC and in addition to sodium reabsorption uh, by the aldosterone stimulating effect. The second type of hormone that are produced by the placenta are the hormones that are steroids in nature. The most important are the estrogen and the progesterone and the main uh, precursor for the synthesis of the progesterone is from the maternal cholesterol. Why they are important? Because the uh, placenta steroids, the estrogen and progesterone, they are very important to, uh, for the proper development of the uh, endometrial and also for uh, proper uterine growth, blood supply, and preparation for labor. This is the uh, physiological function of the uh, estrogen and progesterone. In addition, the estri estriol, the E3, can be used as a biomarker for screening for certain trisomy in the second trimester of a pregnancy, which are the second three months, you could be every three months, we call them trimester. So in the sec uh, second uh, trimester, we can screen by measuring the level of the E3, which is the estriol, uh, for the trisomy 21 and 80. The amniotic fluid is a protective liquid contained in the amniotic sac, and uh, it is very important as it provides a uh, cushion against injury and uh, a media where the baby can, uh, the fetus can move and also it helps to maintain a constant uh, temperature. And also it facilitates the exchange of a nutrient between the mother and the fetus. The volume and the chemical composition of the amniotic fluid is changed according to the uh, gestational age, the fetal age. As the pregnancy increase, uh, advance, uh, then the composition became uh, different. At the early stage of pregnancy, the amniotic uh, fluid is really a, a dialysate of the maternal serum, uh, similar to an ultra filtrate of the maternal serum. But when the fetus grow, then the composition will change and even the volume will change. How does it change? First of all, the sodium concentration in the amniotic fluid will decrease. As a result, the osmolality also will decrease. Why? Because the osmolality depends on the number of particles per volume of fluid. And since the sodium decreases, as a result, the osmolality will decrease. 
So at the beginning, it is similar as an ultrafiltrate of the maternal serum. Later on, when the fetal, uh, fetus grow, the uh, composition change and the volume, sodium will decrease, osmolality will decrease as a result. Certain uh, substances, the concentration of them will increase. For example, the urea and the creatinine and the uric acid will increase. While the sodium and osmolality decrease, the urea, creatinine, uric acid will increase. The most important type of lipid that is found in the amniotic flu fluid is the phospholipid. The type of the phospholipid and the concentration of uh, the phospholipid that's found in the amniotic fluid have a clinical implication as it will reflect the fetal lung maturity. So, the type of the phospholipid and the concentration will reflect the fetal lung maturity. Hormones are also present in the amniotic fluid and both types of uh, hormones are present, whether the protein and the steroid. And these can be used for diagnosis uh, certain disease like thyroid disease of the fetus and congenital adrenal hyperplasia. Certain substance uh, may be found in the amniotic fluid later on and at certain uh, stage of the development. For example, the vernix casosa is an oily substance found in the amniotic fluid. It is composed of the epithelial cell that is desecrumated from the surface of the from the skin that cover uh, the fetus together with the sebum which is an oily substance so together the epithelial cell and the sebum is called vernix cazuza and it is a substance uh, that's oily and found in the amniotic fluid normally the fetus uh, do not defecate during pregnancy in the amniotic fluid but in case of uh, fetal stress he will pass a substance that is called meconium. The, the meconium is a, a green, uh, greenish material uh, composed of bile pigment and it will stain the amniotic fluid green. And when we found this coloration in the amniotic fluid, it is a sign of fetal distress. So normally, uh, at the early stage, the amniotic fluid will be an ultrafiltrate of the maternal serum when the fetus grow, there will be change in the composition and the volume of the fluid. The sodium will decrease, osmolality will decrease, urea, creatinine, and uric acid will increase. The phospholipid is an important component, and it's very important to know the type and the concentration uh, uh, because it reflects fetal lung maturity and it has a clinical application. Hormones are also present, both types, the protein and steroid hormone. Steroid, we mean estrogen, progesterone. Protein are the human chlorine, gonotropin, is example, and human placenta, lactogen. And uh, an oily substance also uh, found a later in later stage of pregnancy. It is called vernix cazuza, composed of the sebum, with together uh, desecumated epithelial cell from the fetal skin. You, normally, the fluid... Uh, uh, if the fetal if there's fetal distress, then it will pass a substance called meconium, and it because it uh, have a bile pigment in it, then it will stain the amniotic fluid green, and it is a sign of fetal distress. How does the maternal body adapt to pregnancy? During pregnancy, a woman undergo dramatic physiological and hormonal change. There will be a large quantity of the estrogen, progesterone, corticosteroid produced during pregnancy, and it, these, all these will affect different body system. General change occur, for example, there will be preference of lipid metabolism over glucose. Why this happen? Because it will uh, allow more glucose to be delivered to the fetus. There will be increase in the angiotensin. As a result of all these change, the uh, body will adapt, the maternal body will adapt and there will be change in a different body system to accommodate for this new change during pregnancy. So there will be biochemical adaptation, renal adaptation, and endocrine adaptation. And because of these different change, then when we measure an analyte in the maternal circulation, we must uh, uh, not uh, compare it with the reference value 
of another pregnant person. The pregnancy uh, have to be com the result of the test of pregnancy have to be compared with a reference value for a pregnant category. The first of these uh, maternal adaptation is the biochemical maternal adaptation. How does the metabolic uh, system be changed secondary to pregnancy? The, regarding the lipid profile, the uh, concentration of cholesterol, triglyceride, phospholipid, and free fatty acid are increased. Why? Uh, because there is a predominance of lipid metabolism over the glucose metabolism. The plasma albumin concentration is decreased because of there be retention of fluid and there be hemodilution. So there be the concentration of the albumin will decrease and later in pregnancy the globulin will increase. So the albumin decrease while the globulin may increase. Certain protein also may be increased during pregnancy uh, by the effect of estrogen. For example, the sex hormone binding globulin will increase. The effect also uh, uh, include the enzyme. Certain enzyme may increase. For example, serum uh, cholinesterase activity will be reduced while the alkaline phosphatase activity is uh, increased. Why the alkaline phosphatase activity increase? Because we will have uh, an isoenzyme that uh, the source is from the placenta. And this isoenzyme of alkaline phosphatase that is from the placenta will increase the total alkaline phosphatase activity. So the, the lipid profile uh, all will increase triglyceride, cholesterol, phospholipid, free fatty acid will increase by about 40%. Plasma albumin decrease because of water retention and dilution, uh, plasma globulin will increase and the transport protein, for example, the sex hormone binding globulin increase by the effect of increased estrogen in pregnancy. The enzyme also will be uh, changed, for example, choline esterase decrease while the alkaline phosphatase activity will increase by a placenta isoenzyme. What are the change? that occur in the renal system secondary to a pregnancy. The glomerular filtration rate will increase to about 170 ml per minute per, per 1.73 squared meter. This means because the glomerular filtration rate increase so that the urea, creatinine, and uric acid clearance will increase. When clearance of these uh, material will increase, it means that the body will get rid of them and as a result, their concentration in the circulation of the mother will decrease. So, the glomerular filtration rate will increase. As a result, clearance of the urea, creatinine, uric acid will increase when it means that there will be wash out of these material as a result, their concentration in the circulation of the maternal circulation will decrease. This is at the beginning or uh, about in the middle of the pregnancy, but near term when the pregnancy approach the end, the glomerular filtration rate, we said at the beginning of pregnancy, it will increase. Now, at the end of pregnancy, it will return to normal and in this condition the urea and because there is no uh, wash out and it will start the urea and creatinine start to uh, arise during the last weeks so at the beginning there will be decrease in the urea creatinine uric acid uh, because of the increased glomerular filtration rate then the glomerular filtration rate will return to normal at the end of pregnancy as a result of this, the urea and creatinine start to increase. Another uh, result of the increased glomerular filtration rate, there will be washout or increase in the excretion of a glucose. And also, 
the uh, not only the glucose the protein also loss in the urine also will increase so we have the as a result of the increase in the glomerular filtration rate uh, there will be decrease in the uric creatinine and uric acid this in the beginning of pregnancy uh, and later on uh, it will return to normal or even increase the glucose uh, loss in the urine and yeah, your uh, glucose urea will happen and the uh, excretion of glucose in the urine will increase the protein loss in the urine also will increase in pregnancy what are the change in the endocrine function in the maternal circulation that allow her to adapt it to pregnancy first of all the progesterone is produced by the corpus luteum of the maternal ovary in response to the human chorionic gonadotropin. Later on, uh, the placenta directly will produce enough progesterone. The progesterone prevent menses and allow the pregnancy to continue. This is the first hormone that will be changed. So first it was secreted from the corpus luteum, later on from the uh, placenta directly, and it is very important for maintenance of the pregnancy. The parathyroid hormone is increased, and no change occur in the concentration of the free calcium. This means that there is a new set point for the secretion of parathyroid hormone, because the calcium uh, is not affected by the change in the uh, parathyroid hormone. Calcitonin uh, doesn't change in pregnancy like the parathyroid hormone, but the concentration of vitamin D is increased. Which type of vitamin D? The 1-25-dihydroxy vitamin D, which is the active uh, form of vitamin D that is produced in the kidney and uh, the aim of this increase is to allow more uh, absorption of calcium from the intestine these change will uh, allow the transfer of large amount of calcium to the developing fetus so the increase in the parathyroid hormone the increase in the 125 dihydroxy vitamin d all these will allow more calcium to be delivered to the fetus The increase in the estrogen also stimulate more production of cortisol binding globulin and the uh, plasma concentration of the cortisol, whether the total cortis uh, cortisol or the free cortisol, are increased several times during pregnancy. The another change in the level of cortisol is both the total and free will increased and the cortisol binding globulin also increased by the effect of the estrogen but the diurnal rhythm of cortisol which means that the cortisol is highest in the morning in the morning and uh, lower in the evening uh, this diurnal rhythm is maintained still the cortisol in the pregnant woman is high in the early morning and lower in the uh, night Aldosterone, which with its sodium retaining ability, is increased. Uh, also, the deoxycorticosterone, sterone, which are one of the glucocorticoids, are increased. So both of them, which are the product of the adrenal cortex, both are increased. The increase in aldosterone may be responsible for the uh, water retaining property uh, that occur during pregnancy because of increased uh, re reabsorption of sodium. The other hormone that may be affected during the pregnancy is the prolactin. It increases about 10 times its level in non-pregnant female. This increase in the prolactin is because of the increase in estrogen. It means that the progesterone will increase during pregnancy and it has different source starting from the in the beginning, it's from the corpus luteum, later on from the placenta, and estrogen also will increase, prolactin will increase, the parathyroid hormone increase, 
the active form of vitamin D is increased and cortisol increase both the total and free with uh, maintenance of the diurnal rhythm the aldosterone which is adrenal corticoid produced from the adrenal cortex will be increased and the deoxycorticosterone is also a glucocorticoid from the adrenal cortex are also increased and the calcitonin doesn't change these are the summary of the maternal endocrine adaptation to a pregnancy other hormones that are changed in a pregnancy is the luteinizing hormone and the follicle stimulating hormone the gonadotropin from the pituitary gland they are suppressed because of the high level of estrogen throughout the pregnancy regarding the thyroid hormone the generally the patient remain eothyroid uh, during pregnancy it means that the TSH is uh, normal and unchanged but there is a small percentage of uh, pregnant women may have thyroid uh, disorder a very small percentage about 0.2 percent will have hyperthyroidism and 2 percent have hypothyroidism one important uh, note regarding the measurement of thyroid function during pregnancy is that the result of thyroid function test must be interpreted using a trimester specific reference interval يعني أنا أقارن كل ما أقارن the level of TSH in pregnant with that of non-pregnant I must check I must compare it with a reference value for the pregnant women in the first trimester and uh, or in the second or in the third trimester we cannot compare the result of a pregnant woman for her thyroid function with that of a non-pregnant and even in the pregnancy each trimester have its own reference interval ننتبه كلش على هاي النقطة انه الثالث function test انقارنا كل trimester يكون value differ from the other trimester and differ from non-pregnant female Certain analytes are normally found in the maternal circulation and produced either by the mother or the fetus. They have an important diagnostic uh, criteria. They are useful for detection of some serious fetal anomaly. One of these substances is called alpha fetoprotein. It is a glycoprotein and normally it is produced by the fetal yolk sac and then by the fetal liver. When we measure this uh, protein, we depend on the gestational age of the baby. We compare it with a certain reference value. If we found that alpha fetoprotein is increased more than the normal, this may indicate that the fetus have an anomaly called open neural tube defect if it is elevated when we measure this protein in the maternal circulation while if we found that this uh, protein the alpha fetoprotein is lower than the normal then we suspect that the fetus may have down syndrome or trisomy 18 so this indicate that this analyte that is normally produced uh, can be uh, it can be uh, used as a biomarker for detecting certain abnormality whether in case of increase it indicate or can be used as a rough screening for fetal open neural tube defect and if it is low this may be associated with down syndrome and trisomy 18 and it can even be used a non-pregnant female as uh, to monitor a certain type of cancer for example the hepatocellular carcinoma the other analyte that can be used as a biomarker is the unconjugated estriol it is, can be uh, can be synthesized in the uh, fetal and require that it have a normal adrenal cortex normal fetal liver and the placenta must be also functioning normally the unconjugate estriol if it is modestly increase decrease sorry modest decrease it may indicate that the fetus may have down syndrome 
and very low level of this uh, analyte, the unconjugate estriol E3, can be a marker of a uh, defect in the biosynthetic pathway or uh, fetal anomalies like anencephaly or fetal death may be associated with unconjugate estriol, very low level of it. Deficiency of the sulfatase enzyme in the placenta also may be associated with unconjugated low level of unconjugate estriol and certain chromosomal anomaly also may be associated with unconjugated estriol while the modest decrease, modest decrease may be accompanied uh, down syndrome. The other normally found substance that can be used as a biomarker is the inhibin A. Inhibin A or inhibin in general are a part of the transforming growth factor B family. Inhibin normal function is to suppress the FSH while activin stimulate the FSH as a part of the feedback control mechanism to regulate the amount of the hormone in the body. Usually they are produced in the placenta, in the Sertoli cell of the testes, and in the granulosa cell of the ovary. These are the normal, uh, normal found substance, but it can also be used as a biomarker in a disease state. In having A during pregnancy, uh, the difference in its level uh, when compared to normal may give a clue that the fetus may have Down syndrome. In a non-pregnant woman, change in the level of the inhibin A or B can be used as a, a marker of ovulation uh, dysfunction or when there is change in the uh, ovarian reserve, we can use the level of inhibin as a marker or sometimes it can be used as a marker of uh, ovarian cancer monitoring. So inhibin are a substance that is normally found and it play a very important role as a suppressor to SFSH production as a part of the normal uh, feedback control mechanism. But in addition to its role, it can be used as a marker uh, of certain disease, uh, whether in pregnant or non-pregnant uh, women, in pregnant for Down syndrome, non-pregnant for ovarian cancer monitoring, and for uh, detection of the ovarian reserve. Bilirubin in the amniotic fluid is found in a very low concentration. If the level of bilirubin increase, it means uh, that the fetus may have erythroblastos erythroblastosis. The erythroblastosis means that there is some sort of hemolytic disease in the newborn or in the uh, fetus. It is a type of anemia in which the RBC of the fetus are destroyed in the maternal immune reaction due to a blood group incompatibility between the fetus and the mother. So increase in the level of bilirubin in the amniotic flu fluid may be a marker of fetal arthroblastosis. And since the amount of bilirubin change with the gestational age, so we must uh, compare the uh, result with the reference value uh, compatible with each gestational age. And thank you.